everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. And today we are starting a new movie series, if you want to call it, uh, to review. And it's not a, a new thing, it's an old thing. And it's called Prom Night. And it was made in 1980. This was a fan requested series. I think the fam requested it all the way back in February of last year, but we did not do it for October because we already had to do the Saw series for the new release, which was like <laughs> nine movies, and we had to do Friday the 13th, so Those were there, a was, lot of movies. there was just no room for anything else. So the first thing that I put as a priority to review this year was the Prom Night series. This this movie's also kind of famous because uh, Jenna from Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, you know, the one that Sophie doesn't like oh at all, God. says terrible things about off camera. No, I don't. She actually, she loves Prom Night. She thinks it's very underrated, and she says it's a very inspiring and classic horror movie. So I was curious to kind of rewatch it because... I saw it once as a like I think as a teenager. I think it was on Netflix. And I thought it was pretty good. But then I forgot the whole movie. I just forgot like everything about it. And then as as an adult, like I saw all these people saying like, eh, that prom night's a terrible movie. Really? It's it's boring, it's dull nothing happens in it, and it sucks. And I was like, oh, well, maybe it does, because I can't remember it at all. But so I was curious to rewatch it and see what I thought after having liked it and then heard other people say it was bad and then be able to rewatch it. Okay, well, I've never seen any prom night movie ever. And uh, Marco kept telling me it was... I would probably find it boring and... Well, yeah, I will say that... I guess I should start off with what I thought. I was watching it, and I thought it had a good opening. I mean, it's it's kind of like what we've seen before. Yeah. Like, I know what you did last summer, which I know that came after it, but still, it's like a very typical horror story, and... I was kind of getting bored by it, and what I told Safi was the only reason that I haven't fallen asleep watching the movie is that <laughs> I was watching it standing up, <laughs> and, and that's it's actually very 100% true. Uh, I found a large portion of this movie very boring. I found it to be very repetitive and... Like, there should have been more to it. I kind of felt like maybe maybe it's because of the budget, because they didn't have a high budget, so they had to, like, save what little they could do for the very end, like the last 20 minutes or so. But then when it got to that last 20 minutes, it, it got really, really good. And I thought, you know, this movie actually is good. It's just that you have to wait for that payoff. And because I've always said before, like, what's really important for a good movie is that it sticks the landing. And that means that it ends on a good note and that it ends on a, in a place where, like, it, it turns out to be really satisfying and not, like, leaving you with a negative impression. So it ended really that's, well. That's good. The last 25 minutes was really, really good, and it totally made up for the rest of the movie being kind of boring <laughs> so i will i think it's a, a good movie actually I, I will watch it again not uh not over other movies like you know something that's really funny to me is that salem's lot the the miniseries you know that's like four what three or four hours and yeah i don't get bored watching that it so went, it went at least two nights i believe yeah, so the fact Two, that I the fact that I don't get bored watching that, but I would get bored watching this, it just shows that like it doesn't have anything to do with the length, it just has to do with what's Content. going on in the movie. Yeah. 
Now, Safi, what did you think since you were, like, trying to jump ahead? What? Well, there were, there were a few things I didn't like about it. I hated the music at prom night. Oh, it the, was, that was it terrible. It was supposed to be disco music. Ugh. I didn't recognize any of it, and I lived through that well, time. Didn't they have a song called Prom Night or yes, something? They did. that It kept they, playing they over and over again. Prom night, prom night, prom night. Yeah, and, that's, and I'm like, are they saying the words prom night? Because I, I I've never heard the song. I, I thought that, those songs. that was really goofy. Especially the part where that guy's head gets chopped off and it's on the prom stage and they're playing that disco music as people are running away. I started laughing <laughs> when that happened because that was like a hilarious moment. Like his head was just like, ooh. And <laughs> that was really funny. Did you think that was funny, Safi? It was strange. It okay. was, but it, that, it was. Because that awesome. was goofy. I would say this whole movie was a feast of red herrings. And uh, if you pay really close attention, I'm not going to say anything about who. Why? Why? Well, I don't I don't think you should. I don't think. I won't say it yet. But we're reviewing. I, I know. Oh, but okay. I won't, okay, well, I won't say it yet. Okay. You know who the killer is. You, you know who. But they have this humongous red herring it's like it's like somebody's throwing uh a watermelon in your face or something cut a watermelon <laughs> a it splashes watermelon. it's rotten it splashes in your face they have to some kind of and i could not hear i have my earphones there they're not working properly i finally had to take them out so i could hear and i had to replace some stuff Sophie broke them she they, mi she mishandles everything she well, owns. when I go I, at night they get stuck some of they get stuck under me and they get they pull which that that's happened get, to me before what what'll happen is they get stuck on a handle and then they pull out and they yeah. fall and and what that does is it damages the earphones and yeah, it, it makes it so they don't work it does so, which is why I don't even do that anymore or I try not to because yeah <laughs> well so anyway. There's this, and I, this this isn't even really part of the story. It's kind of like this, like distraction of somebody throwing a, pieces of rotten watermelon in her face. There's a psychopath who was around at the time. No, it was like a a, a child molester. Oh well, they did call him. A, he went to the. He was and in they, a car wreck, and he what, got he got burned. Yeah. So what happened at first was. These kids chase this girl out the window there, which I, I didn't understand. Like, that death of that little girl in this, like, abandoned place, was that a high school, too? Like the, yeah, I or think that, so. Like an abandoned high school. That was, like, the most avoidable, like, unnecessary death in horror movie history. It would have been manslaughter because, because they didn't, but <laughs> what they did was... They wouldn't have gotten charged. She, They're kids. Well, I know that, but that's what somebody, some real go getter, it, it was prosecutor. Like, why? Would why did they just keep on chasing her and and chanting to her? Like, what are they doing? Like, what did they know. hope to accomplish here? I don't know. That's it what didn't I was make wondering. any sense at all. And then they're like, "Oh, wow, she fell out the window. How did that happen?" And then oh a couple my God. of them wanted to go and call for help. Yeah, and the other one said no. We'll just go home, pretend like it never happened, which is, you know, what that all means. Like Beaver Cleaver. It's not a, it's not a good thing. <laughs> no. But anyway, somebody saw, and that's who the murder w was. And I thought, because at the end of it, after the kids had gone, they show the father, who we don't know it's the father. Well, we do. We're pretty fast. But he's out, uh, actually the principal of the high school. Yeah, Leslie Nielsen. Yes, Which he it was, was the other. It was. It's Jamie, nice seeing him again. Yeah, in a different role, not a comedic role. I like seeing him in serious roles. Yeah, well, he's he is really good. Um, so I'm thinking because I, I thought he may have seen it, and so we don't come to realize until these kids who uh, escaped, and there's also a brother and a sister of the girl who was killed. They're the they're the kids 
including the one who was killed, of Leslie Nielsen. Those are his children until they're in high school. And so I'm thinking during the almost the entire movie that he must have been there for some reason and he saw who did it or he saw them run away and then he saw his daughter well, out there. I, I felt like this was a very simple mystery that the filmmakers had to com- uh, purposefully like fuck with and make it to where you didn't know what happened. You know, like if you just saw a straightforward run through the, of the events, you would have been like, oh, that's the killer. But it, it was because the movie was very confusing at the beginning. They cut all over the place. Like they just go, oh, blah, 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 all over the place. And you're like, wait, who's that? Who's that? What's that? What's going on here? And then. Yeah, I had to start <laughs> writing people's names down because yeah. I, I didn't you know. The kids who ran away, I had to look a few times to see what their names were because they did show it. When they went up to the high school and they showed the character, they flashed back to the day the little girl died. And they showed the, the person they were focusing on and they, and they would put the name. So then that's I started outlining because I was like, I have to know who these people are. It seems to be important. So, And then the movie starts, and I'm not kidding you when I say that an hour of this movie is like a teenage sitcom of, like, these kids getting ready for prom. Pretty much the only horror... I thought that was stupid. Pretty pretty much the only horror thing that's going on is that the killer is calling them all and say, Hey, Jamie Lee Curtis! No, they didn't call her. I'm gonna be on a prom night. No, they're gonna. I'm gonna get you. Killer doesn't call Jamie Lee Curtis. And he calls almost everyone that was like there at the at the the murder. People who were at the high school who. who Yeah. They didn't push her out, but they chased the little girl and yelled at her. Yeah, I don't know what they expected. (laughs) They call and these are the names of the kids. Just I'll just say who they are: Jude. Kelly, Nikki, that's a guy, and Wendy. So I think it's three girls and a guy. My right? favorite part of this whole repetitive, like, hour-long sequence was the part where there was that one guy, and he never actually answered the phone. Oh, that was and Nikki. And he, he was ignoring the whole thing, like, that he didn't even know the phone was ringing. No. And so then we see the killer... And he hangs up the phone, and he gets really frustrated, and he crosses, he crosses out his, his name, name yeah, and, and he, he drops the pencil in anger. I thought that that was cool. That was funny. So you wonder, because then the killer, they show the killer going through a yearbook, and it seems like a really small school, or it's a small class, and he cuts, or no, he tears out, each picture, one of Jude as a high schooler, and Kelly and Nick and uh, Wendy. And then he leaves a, a uh, he went into the girls' bathroom at the, at the girl, in the girls' gym at the high school, and he broke a mirror. And when Jamie Lee Curtis was there with uh, Nick, uh, no, Kelly, And uh, so they ran away, and the killer took a shard of uh, an individual small size shard from that glass mirror and attached it to the picture of each person and put it in their locker. Now, I don't. I don't know. Did Nick get his? I don't know. I can't. I I was kind of. Maybe I missed that part because. I was like, I was kind of getting bored. I mean, they kept on talking about prom, and I was like, you know, I didn't even go to prom. So, I mean, this is just kind of uninteresting to me. And well, uh, and also, you see Jamie Lee Curtis, and what do you know, Safi? Well, she looks older than everybody else. Oh, I know, but she, what she what else like do you know? She looks like she's 28. She looks like she's 70. What what else do you know <laughs> when you see her, Safi? Well, Come on. What, no, what do you know? What do you automatically know? have no idea oh my god i don't god. know what you're talking about she's the final girl that's what you know you know but that she she's gonna know. survive it's so easy to tell oh look she she's the one anything. they're focusing on over and over and over again you know she's gonna survive you know she's gonna be okay 
You know she's going to go up against the killer at the end. Well, I knew and she was okay. She was boring in this movie. She was very boring and bland. She was probably the worst character in the movie. Every other character but her was more interesting. Even they had this like creepy, weird, uh, pervert guy. I mean, this, this, who, the, the, he, the cigarette guy. He dressed like Michael Myers, and and he had a oh, black jumpsuit guy. on, and that he had the, this uh, uh, curly hair, and was a janitor. And no, he wasn't Safi. He was. He was one of the high schoolers. Well, that's the. He had curly hair, and let me talk, Safi. I'm trying to talk now. See, you you keep on doing this in every single review we do where I'm talking and you keep interrupting me, and it's really not good, uh, it's, it's not good radio. Okay, uh, I thought that that character even was more interesting than Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, she was just, like, she's exactly the same person in every single movie that she is in. She is so boring and dull. Like, I, I don't know why she became the popular actress that she became... She is so overrated, it's not even funny. Uh, I basically think it's because of who she's related to. That's the only thing that I can tell. Because she's terrible. You look at the Halloween movies, and honestly, like, Dr. Loomis is so much better than her. <laughs> you look at uh, Terror Train. I mean, does anybody remember Jamie Lee Curtis and Terror Train? No, because she's trash. I mean, she is the most overrated, one of the most overrated horror actresses in history. And now you can talk, Safi. I don't know what to say. I, she, Why? Uh, she, I, I thought she looked older than everybody. I thought she looked in, like in her late 20s. And at first, when she came down the stairs, see, she is the prom queen, and Nikki is the prom king. And she was wearing this outfit that looked like an old woman. And I know it's 1980. And I know they're wearing vintage clothing. But then when you go to the prom and you look at everybody, they're wearing really cool dresses with T-straps. And they're really nice looking. And But then she took off, I guess that was a coat or something and a jacket. It looked like it was the dress, though. And uh, I just, I'm glad she changed because... She looked like an old lady. She was already looking older than everybody to begin with. God, Safi. But I knew she would survive because everybody who was dying, being attacked, were kids who were involved in the, in the, well, uh, what would you call it, the... Except for it, Seymour, who you well, talked was, about. Yeah. <laughs> Safi was... Re- he Safi, got in the way. Safi was really upset over Seymour. She was, like, uh, crying because of no, Seymour's death. No, I was death. not crying. Yeah, you were. Everybody was involved in the accident of that little girl. So you knew she wasn't involved. She wasn't even there. She was back at the high school. She yeah. forgot something. Or not the high school, her school, which was probably a middle school or what grade school. She forgot something. She went back, so she wasn't even there when her sister got killed. So it, 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 and it did, everything did go, like Marco said, she faced up with the killer at the end. That's true, but she wasn't ever going to be killed. But Seymour was a boy that Jude was with. I don't think he went to the school. He was kind of a, a dumpy-looking guy. And he smoked milk. And And funnily enough, he actually gets the girl, and he, and he actually had sex with her twice, which is, and this movie does a good job at subverting horror movie expectations because if, if this was a Friday the 13th movie... You know, he he never would have gotten any uh, any uh, girl friend yeah. Yeah, ever. Right. He would have gotten killed. They did that in part three. You know, he was uh, he was gonna get the girl, and then he screws up, and then she gets mad at him, and they both get killed. Like, you know, because he's how he is, and he's not like a pretty boy guy, like the the guys who survive in those movies. So, I really liked his character. I really liked. All the characters in this movie, except for Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> uh, you know, my favorite part, and this is probably, so- maybe Sophie thinks it's good, but uh, I love the part where there was that girl, and she's too scared to have sex. Oh, yeah. and the guy And the guy says, oh, okay, I'm just going to go hook up with someone else then. 
And, uh, <coughs> which, ew, I don't know why they're hooking up in the school. That's oh, gross. That is gross. But it isn't, I mean, I think the stereotype is you go to prom and then you get a room or something. I don't think it's you hook up inside the school. It was, like, very convenient for the killer. Yeah. But, uh, you think, you know, this girl, she, she's she gone through this sad evening and she's having a terrible time because she doesn't want to have sex right now. And then she gets chased by the killer for, like, 20 whole minutes <coughs> <laughs> it's like you really don't know if she's gonna survive or not because it's so intense. It's probably the best horror movie chase scene I've ever Are seen. You about Wendy, yeah. That was later, the, you're, I, first you're I, first you're talking about Kelly. No, that's, that's the one who got that, killed in the. I don't know where they were. That's the same girl. No, right? it is not. It was. She was the first one to get killed. Oh. Well, Kelly okay. Was first, and then Jude okay. was second. Okay, then I'll amend what I'm saying. Okay, I liked that that girl got dumped on and then she got killed because I thought that was really mean spirited, and so it was really unexpected. Because usually in these horror movies, they always make the victims look like they deserved it. You know, like they make them, they make them jerks and they make them like people who were nasty anyways. And honestly, well, she was the one that. You're talking about them that nobody would like. You could make an she argument. You could make an argument. These people did deserve what they got because of what they did to that girl. But they but were little kids. The chase too. sequence was my favorite part of the movie. It lasted for so long, and you really didn't know what was going to happen. I thought you might get and, away. And what I loved about it was the killer. I hate it. I hate all these like supernatural killers who are so like invulnerable to everything but then they just kill by one little weakness or whatever i liked how you could tell the killer was human too and the killer would make these mistakes mm -hmm. and you know he was very vulnerable as well he's just a guy and so i really loved this whole sequence that was my favorite part of the movie well see that is when when these kids start getting killed that the first it's kelly then it's Jude. There, she was actually in the van with Seymour, and the door. They didn't lock their doors, and the killer opened the door and he slit Jude's throat. And then Seymour started trying to drive away. The guy took with over, Seymour. and they went over. Not the killer, but Seymour and uh, Jude went over the cliff and burnt. And their van was on. Plate fire. You were obsessed got, with they Seymour. They died in a Safi. fiery crash. Why are you so sad about Seymour? Well, because he didn't have anything to do with any of it. I don't <laughs> even think he went to the school. That was the thing. And I don't think the guy meant to kill him. So you think he was a pedophile? No, he was just a uh, some random guy. Actually, you think he's homeschooled? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't have that back then. Not really. Oh. Not like now. Um. So anyway, and it, the thing with, and so Kelly was first, then Jude, and then Wendy was the other girl. Now, she was a biatch, and she did not like Jamie Lee Curtis and she, because she was jealous. So we have this other little story where... Yeah, that's the stupidest part of the it movie. Is. Jamie Lee Curtis is with Nicky, remember? He's the only boy who was... Who was uh, with those girls when that girl went out the window. And he is the prom king. Jamie Lee Curtis is the prom queen. Right. And she is jealous because she is the girlfriend. And she's like, it doesn't matter who you take to the prom. It matters who you go home with. And, you know, <laughs> it was like that. I was like, Ugh, bleh. and, you know, Safi, can, can you just say for a second, did this remind you of prom at all, this whole movie? Or did was it like, or what? Because I can't say, so what do you think? Was it in any no. way, like, reminiscent uh, my, to prom? Uh, but the proms, I, they were so boring. I uh. hated it. And it's no good. And it's just, no, you know, it, this crying and, you know, it reminded me of Marco's school dances in middle school. I don't know how you I, would know that I because I didn't go to any school dances yeah, ever. Yeah, you were. No, I didn't. Well, if you didn't. Are you sure you didn't go? Yes, yeah, Safi. Well, maybe, I did oh, not go to anyone. Jim. Oh, it yeah, was see. Jim at Ferguson. Because Safi discouraged me from going to school dances. She said that they're boring and they're they a waste are. of time. So I was so I'd I wasn't be out in the able hall to go volunteering uh, for my other boy. 
and this was at the middle that was at the middle school and you have all these girls and they would come out crying and it would drive me up the wall they'd be by themselves like <laughs> So and so doesn't want to be with me. So and so doesn't like me. And I'm like, oh God. Now this is high school though. They're a little bit nastier and meaner. And any anyway, Wendy hooked up with this guy who was wanted to be with Jamie Lee Curtis, and he was a and Marco brought him up at the beginning. The pervert. He was a cigarette smoker, and he was kind of like a hood. And he actually <laughs> got. I think he got kicked out of school. He yeah. shows up for the prom because she asked him to go with her. And he brought two boys with him. And they're going to sabotage it and turn it into a carry type situation. Yeah, but he and but he was going to be the prom queen and they were going to tie up and knock out Nikki. So, but uh, they're, they're that's plan- another story. Their plans get foiled by the killer and the killer kills I think both of them and, and he now to kill Nikki. Okay, and so... He, he, he hurts somebody, he doesn't the, kill him. In the final fight, it's Jamie Lee Curtis, I think, and in, in him versus the killer? Or well, who she's was it? Prote- she's helping, she's trying to help Nikki because he's yeah. fighting off. But yeah. he's been, he was, kind, he was knocked out. So he's not altogether, what would you call it, stable. And this is, this is the thing I had all along. I thought it was the father... All the way up until the end because it was a tall guy. And I thought the younger brother, but I still hadn't remembered the beginning of the movie. I thought he was, even in high school, I thought he was shorter than Jamie Lee Curtis because she is a little bit tall. So this guy was wearing all black and a mask. But before you get to that, this, this was a really good final fight. It was another great point of the movie where I thought, oh, okay, at least this was worth it. The thing that I didn't like about it, though, was that while they were having this intense confrontation, they were playing that prom night song oh. in the background, <laughs> and it totally ruined it. I was like, you know, they had good scary music for the first part of the movie. They had all this moody music, and I was like, why didn't the person making the music make any song for the final fight in a horror movie. You know, like, it was totally ruined by prom night, prom night, prom night in the background. Right, Safi? <laughs> didn't yeah. that ruin it? Like, why, why didn't they use the good music, the scary music? I, I don't know, because they did have scary music in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It was All really throughout good. the first and I half. Thought, oh wow! They're, yeah. they're going to have actually some good music. No. Nope. Then when they, as soon as they started playing that music or prom, not just the prom, and they started night, dancing, it was gross it, music. <laughs> and I know it was it the was, disco area, but they, why didn't they? Couldn't they have gotten a, a, it a was, real music? It was so cringeworthy. Would it really have cost that much to put it in the movie? It reminded me of watching. Uh, it reminded me of watching like a a home videotape of like someone that you never knew and like you're seeing them doing this embarrassing like it was so bad this the dancing sequence in this movie it lasted for like 30 minutes uh, too oh and uh oh, and then i was about to bark they would cut away and i was like oh thank god someone's gonna get killed again thank god <laughs> and then uh yeah the killer gets revealed and at first like you see his eyes and I, it and was I, I thought it was a girl because his eyelashes were long so then, and they were made up in a way. And then I uh, thought it was then I thought it was her mother because you could tell she recognized who it was yeah. behind the mask, and it was a black like you couldn't tell. You just I mean they had perfectly cut out eyes, and so you can see the eyes pretty clearly. So if you know your family member you know that that's you know them you can see him and she could tell she recognized jamie lee and And i i like that final part where they chase him out the door and he's human again and so he's like stumbling around and and the police are going to shoot him and everything and it's it's not like these normal horror movies where like the killer's this big uh invulnerable force of nature and it's like he's just a, a person, 
and then he drops down and she takes off his mask and we see that it was the brother of the girl who got killed and it's see just... I for, I forgot he was even there or anything like I didn't because it was so confusing at the beginning so what happened was at the beginning with the kids not, not the ones who were bad okay these are the, the 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 brother and the two sisters the children of the principal okay so you have Jamie Lee Curtis you have the sister who was killed and you have her little brother who is short and now back then shorter than both of them and so when Jamie Lee Curtis, as a little girl, goes back to the wherever her school and gets whatever she left behind, who's left? The little brother and the other sister. And the other sister, or their little brother just disappears. So he goes into the building ahead of her, and you never see him again. And then the little sister goes in, and she finds those kids, and then they all surround her, and the rest is history. Okay, Safi, I have a good question before for you before you get back to the killer who you're... No, that's it. You're obsessed. Oh, okay. This, I've, uh, I've forgotten all about that he was there. Forgot all about it because they never showed him again. You know, we have been constantly referring to Jamie Lee Curtis as Jamie Lee Curtis this whole video. Safi, I want to prove how unmemorable this character is. What was the character's name she played? Can you remember without looking at your notebook? Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah! Uh, see, guys? I, see? I, no, I She's don't, trash. I don't remember her character. Boom. Trash character. Because I just thought she, she seemed older than everybody else. And she's like her own person. You know, like, it, it, they're all filler, except for Leslie Nielsen. They're all filler, and she's the standout person. So they're only there as a supporting story although it's massive and there's tons of red herrings and yeah. innocent people get killed that i know the killer didn't mean to kill and um well i would love triangles and, i would say that overall this was a pretty good movie yeah because of the payoffs well another thing that i really resented and i do watch a lot of um and i've said this before i'll watch a, a, a youtube videos where it's they solved a 20-year-old mystery, a 30-year-old mystery, etc. And this was a police misdirection. And they never, as soon as they found out that that psycho killer who did kill some girl. I thought they, he just molested someone or something. I, 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 and then I, well, I no, thought. Well, no, found a body in, the, in that school. It, 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 um, they, they had it all covered up, but then they showed a picture. It was a girl by a beat-up Volkswagen. And <clears throat> so that, he did kill somebody. Wasn't that the girl in the beginning of the movie? No, this was later. Oh. And so they think that this he's around, hanging around the school. Yeah, they think he he's out for revenge, which honestly, he he did deserve some revenge for but getting that, blamed for something he didn't do. Yes, yeah, and he was blamed for the killing of that little girl. He had absolutely... And so we that was another thing... For a while, you think, what well, has to be him because he's, like, getting his revenge. And the police were totally misdirected because almost near the end, uh, a policeman comes in, a detective, and says, well, they caught the, that guy 50 miles from here. So they say, oh, good, we can rest easy while this killer's killing all these kids. And so the police don't even know. They're not even in it until the very end when they come and it's all over, and they're about ready to shoot uh, that kid, the brother, and I think he, I think Jamie Lee Curtis managed to get him with the axe. I mean, cut him. I thought so, she, like, hit him. One last thing that I liked about the movie was I liked that earlier in the movie, the pervert guy, he actually wore <laughs> the same costume as the killer, uh, the same type of mask and everything, and so... yeah. I like that they did that kind of misdirection because it was like anyone could wear this costume. Whereas, you know, in Halloween, there's only one person going around with the Michael Myers mask on. Right. You know, so I, I kind of like that idea, too. And then 
I, I don't. What's your food review, Siphon? Well, my, since there were so many misdirections, and I did not remember about the boy at the beginning. What'd which, you eat on prom night? Um, nothing. Nothing good. Anyway, I don't even care. After prom was more fun. We went one night. One the first year we went on a hay ride. The second year we went to Kansas City. Took the bus to Kansas City. This is after prom, and we got on a boat on the river boat went on the Missouri River. So that was fun. Anyway, um what was I gonna say? Oh, my food review. Well, the thing is, because I, I'm I'm pretty good at figuring out who the killer is ninety percent of the time. There's some well I you know, I told you I read a ton of books and I've been you know, I'll what happens is I wake up in the middle of the night and I'll listen and so I'll tire the next day. So uh, my memory isn't as sharp. And so um, I should have known this. This just really irritates me, but who it really was, because I was misdirected all the way up to the end. Because like Marco said, he was wearing makeup. It was kind of like a psycho thing where Tony uh, Perkins uh, turns into his mother and he has, you know, he has the dress and <laughs> makeup and all that. But I mean, he's not talking like Tony his, Perkins. the little girl or anything. He just has the makeup on, but, and, and his size confused me. I really thought it was the dad. Then I thought it was because of the makeup through the mask. I thought it was the mother. That was for about two and seconds. you thought, you know, her, his chest was so small, she's probably lashing out at the patriarchy for uh, not being given uh so anyway um we've had this cantaloupe in our kitchen for a week and i smelled the ends of it and i got i didn't think it was ripened and i thought it was not going to be good well it was finally cut open and yesterday i tried some it was perfect and it was sweet and it was good and i thought it was out of season too but anyway uh so that's what it reminded me of and the best analogy uh, I could compare it to I guess because um, it was better than what I expected and it also I got misdirected I thought I was told that when you smell the ends of the cantaloupe that that means if it smells really good then it's ready to eat. Safi often goes to the grocery store and smells cantaloupe. Well, no, there's hardly, I mean, it's not in season. I she mean, often, if it is, we're, we haven't really, this she often I've seen it. She often picks things up at the grocery tor- store and smells no, it. that's what they tell you to smells do. Smells them. For cantaloupe. Sometimes she picks up chicken liver and smells no, it to see I if it's don't. good. Marco's now, he's making up stories. Sometimes she picks up Twinkies to smell if they're... Ew, I don't even like Twinkies. If they're so good anyway, enough to eat. If they're fresh. So to, to me, this was like this cantaloupe that I thought really, because Marco told me almost the entire movie how boring it was, and he had to stand up to watch the whole thing. Well, no, was, I didn't have to. I was just, I, I happened to be standing up, and I knew if I hadn't been standing up, I would have fallen asleep for in the first half of the movie. So it, anyway, it surprised me, and it threw me off, which was stupid of me because I should have remembered nobody that nobody showed the little boy ever again. And until they went to the funeral or something, but that was it. They never showed the little boy at the school when it happened. You never saw it. And um, and he see he was being mean to her too right before he disappeared into the school. So he probably felt tremendous guilt too that he couldn't help her or didn't help her. We don't know because I don't know where he... They never showed where he went to the school. Never yeah. showed him. Yeah. And so I forgot all about him. And then at the end, like I said, they show his dad. He was up there by the window where the little girl had fallen through. So I thought, oh, why is he there? So he must be... He saw it and he's going to take it out on those kids when they get older? I don't know. But anyway, so that's what what, what I gave it. So well, how about you? Well, Safi's going to love this review. Uh-oh. Well, so a couple of years ago, we went to California, <laughs> and uh, they had terrible food in California. Yeah, like, where we were. I don't know what it was, but the food was awful for the most part. Like, uh, 
it was really, really bad. But then we went to this other part. It was actually the resort where the the really bad, boring, lame John Candy comedy, yeah. The Great Outdoors, was filmed. Yeah. Which was kind of interesting because I didn't know that, you know... I I didn't know that I was going there or anywhere where there was, like, a filming location, so that's kind of fun. And they actually had a lot lot of good food around there. In particular, they had these two restaurants. They had the upstairs restaurant and the downstairs restaurant. And (laughs) I went to the upstairs restaurant once, and I got this really good chicken sandwich. And it was, like, chicken with ghost pepper cheese and tomato and lettuce and I think bacon and spicy mayo or something and it was really delicious and we were never allowed to go to the upstairs restaurant again there was one night where Safi got really sick uh and she forced us to go to this general store and get a frozen pizza instead of going to the upstairs restaurant I was miserable during the whole time but Safi didn't have to go we were just we were like, I'd like to go to the upstairs restaurant to get a chicken sandwich. So this movie was kind of like that. And then, of course, we left and we couldn't go to the upstairs restaurant ever again. <laughs> and uh, this movie's kind of like that, where I saw this movie as a teenager and I thought it was good. And then I didn't watch it again. And then a bunch of other people tried to convince me it was bad. And then I finally watched it and I was like, yeah, that's that was really good. It was just as good. Is I remembered it was. I mean, it's not the greatest movie in the world, but it's pretty good. Well, there's a lot of distractions. And pretty good is a lot better than bad or okay. Right. So, uh, just like that chicken sandwich was pretty good. I wouldn't know, though, of course, because... Oh, for heaven's sakes. Marco went to another... Across from the resort, there was another restaurant. I couldn't even go. I was that so was sick. that was for lunch. And that, Safi. but they had it, a it, malt. It was a diner. Malt. And here's the uh, oh, here's Safi just made it worse. Here's the other thing too. I purposefully did not get very much food at this diner because I thought I would be eating the beautiful upstairs restaurant <laughs> food later. So I purposefully didn't eat very much. <laughs> And then I came home and it was like, well, there's that frozen pizza when you're on a vacation. Got to go to the general store when there's a restaurant right there to eat at. Yeah, it's a shame. I just... The upstairs restaurant. It was on that chemotherapy. Oh, shit. The phone fell. Is it still... That was... That's what you call a twist in the review. (laughs) I was taking the chemotherapy pill, and, uh, oh, boy, (laughs) it just made me sicker than a dog. I just, like, I barely made it several times, and then one time I didn't make it, and it was not good, and I won't say what that's about, but it was miserable, and, um, anyway, we don't want to talk about that, but, um, yeah, it, it just... I would recommend it, but, you know, it's not like you're going to be on the edge of your seat and you're going to be, it's some, it's more of a, like a little thinking, but if, if you, and, and you have to be able to stay on the music too. Uh, the f- first part with the scary music, it, that is good. And I was really hopeful. But then when they started playing that fake disco music, because I, I don't think I've ever heard any of that. Even that prom night song, I don't remember hearing that. Uh, it it's it's gross. <laughs> I mean, you almost like want to hold your ears, and you probably could, and just watch that chase scene, because it does go on for quite a while. And she managed to evade him, and all the doors are locked, which is unbelievable. Because for a fire code code and a huge filled gym, I would think they'd have to have more doors open. So that kind of surprised me. And, uh, but anyway, if you want to be strung along by red herrings, even though I've said, we've said who the killer is, you still, it's, it's just good. It's entertaining and it's fun. And, uh, 
And you might want to watch it, too, to tell us, or if you have seen it, what you thought about Jamie Lee Curtis. Now, I'm not going to talk about her other stuff, but just this particular movie. Um, what was the movie that we saw her in as an adult, the, the funny one? Freaky Friday? No, no, not that one. The Trading one, Places? Trading Places. That movie was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, that was a comedy. Yeah. And she was in that. And she wasn't the, completely the main character. They had a collection, and it was mainly, um, oh, who are they? Well, God, there's Al Franken's in it, which is, this is when he wasn't a senator. Sophie, come on. But this anyway, is, this is a prom just, night review. You're it's, starting to do this every single review okay, now. Okay, well, anyway, she, 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 you just tell us what you think oh, if okay. you are aware. So that's it. So, Sophie, I don't think we have anything else to better say. Better go take your pills. Be quiet. I'm not taking any pills. Yeah, you need some now. Marco, be quiet. You need to take the review pill. No, I didn't need to take a nap. Anyway, um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Get yourself and a juice box. Come on, be quiet. That's take a bullshit. Nap. Take, anyway, come, sit in the corner Marco, and be quiet. <laughs> you need a time out. <laughs> Come on down and be one of our subscribers if you can stand the bad banter between us. Well, right? the bad uh, bad the banter, I've gotten like a thousand subscribers from that Joker 2 review. Yeah, I have. And what have you people thought about? Don't go see Joker, Joker 2. The Joker movie. Don't see it I at did, all. I did finally see it. and uh, But Marco went ahead and did the review, which was okay because he saw it like would you do see it like two days before I did? And uh, that's that was like my review of it is it was like circling the drain. It was like you had these little flashes of what it should be. I mean, what with the crowds, what it could have been, with yeah. the crowds yelling for Joker and why they're killing them off. It, you know, it just makes no sense. <laughs> I, I just, I. It, but I I don't like Joaquin Phoenix, okay? I don't know. So either. it doesn't really upset me. If they decide to bring him back as somebody else and they get somebody else to do the movie, I and I can see everybody questions about the music, the singing. It's just not. It's not really the music. It's just singing, constant singing, a cappella, which means no music, just on your own. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's in lieu of writing dialogue. Yeah. In other words, you're explaining moods and feelings that people have without doing dialogue. Well, you see, already that's, have things that are written. That, that's why a lot of people don't like musicals is because, you know, it's like, it's basically like people are singing what they're already saying or what they're already thinking. So... You know. Well, you remember that Moulin Rouge. This is what it reminded me of. Ooh. That was a lot flashier and actually did have music and dancing and pretty clothes and but this movie it was like the drain has there's the, the sink is totally full of to the top and it's draining really slowly slowly it's all the water's going out and slowly that's what the movie reminds me of and and um and then, and then the thing where he's not, he gets assaulted by the guards because he's been pretending like, you know, he's saying he's Joker. He put on his mask. He kind of, he was one way, his back to his individual self, and he went back to the Joker, and they assaulted him, and then he decided to go back to him being who he, you know, the human being he is, not the Joker. And then Lady Gaga gets mad at him, and she was trying to... God, do Safi, well, what's I, going on? But anyway, it's just... Uh, Safi has stupid. Joker 2 derangement syndrome it's now. Just, uh, it's just... I can't believe they killed him off. But I hope they bring it back as, with a different actor. I don't like Joaquin Phoenix at all. I do like Lady Gaga, and she can sing. He can't sing. That's another thing. He's singing a cappella, and he can't sing. So... <laughs> Anyway, that's it. So, goodbye, everybody. Bye.